The social teaching is arguably Trotsky's a magnum opus. However, if we want to see what the most, what the backbone of his academic activity throughout his entire academic career was, then I don't think his um, study of theology and sociology is really the most um, important or the most central or the most ongoing um, concern of his. The most central concern that he comes back to time after time after time is his particular perception of, of difficulties ensuing from the confrontation between Christianity and Christianity for him includes the church as well as theology and that includes academic theology, the confrontation of Christianity with the modern world. For Trulch, the most central challenge for theology in his own time clearly is a challenge to its intellectual integrity and its intellectual honesty. And it's part of that commitment to intellectual honesty that Trulch felt it was his job to ask the most difficult questions that the modern world is posing to traditional worldviews, which include for him Christianity. Now, of course, we all know how um, the emergence of modern science um, changed people's understanding of the world, of the origins of the world, of the origins of humankind, of course the um, um, in, in impact of Darwin's um, uh, discovery of the theory of evolution was being felt in Trulch's own time. And yet for Trulch, the scientific challenges to religion and to Christianity in particular are not the most serious ones. We don't get the sense that he is deeply, deeply worried about uh, their impact on the sustainability of traditional religion. For Trilch, it suffers no doubt that the biggest challenge to traditional religion, in particular to Christianity, comes from what he likes to call historicism, from the transformation of the way we look at and think about human history, and that includes the history of religions. I need to pause here for a short moment to explain what Trulch has in mind when he uses this term historicism. It's a kind of shorthand which is used very often, certainly in the German academic debate, both, both among um, um, historians and others, including philosophers and theologians from the beginning of the 19th century almost, it usually denotes two things, I, I think. It denotes, on the one hand, an awareness that the particular methods that are being used to study history have been transformed in a fundamental way. And this fundamental way is sometimes not very precisely described by using the word critical. So historicism stands for an approach to history which looks critically at every single source, which does not accept any given historical source at face value, but will intuitively and initially always approach these sources with a spirit of skepticism. Is it really true what this source tells us? Do we have to consult other sources? Do we have reasons to doubt the source that are perhaps um, um, imminent reasons? Um, so historicism stands for the transformation of the perception of history or the understanding of history in the spirit of critical, the critical study of sources. Historicism at the same time is also used to describe something like an overall attitude, a worldview, 
we might say, an intellectual paradigm in which every single problem can be seen as a historical problem. So we can study the laws of our own nation, we can compare these laws with the laws in other countries, but we may also start to think about the legal system as part of human culture that has evolved historically during a long period of time and then the law itself becomes almost a subcategory of history. In this sense historicism denotes a particular way of understanding and looking at the whole sphere of human culture that was very popular in the century preceding church. So he stands in many ways at the end of that period called historicism. He looks back at it. He very much thinks of himself and his own mission as the task to summarize what has been achieved by historicism and to move beyond it. The reason he understands and describes his own task in this way is because Church, Church's relationship with historicism is, well, as everything in his life and career, is a complicated one. He does accept, and from today's perspective we, we may be inclined to ask whether he was right or wrong in accepting that, but Church does accept that historicism is is just a factor of modern life. We have to accept that today we understand human culture in its entirety as something that has histor is historically, um, um, has historically developed, that has historical origins, that changes across history, and in order to understand any aspect of human culture, we have to um, um, use his, the, the tools of historiography. And he also accepts that the tools of historiography we have to accept are the modern tools of critical historiography. So he has no time for anybody who thinks that we can simply sidestep that particular um, situation. But at the same time, Trulch is also very conscious, very conscious that historicism is at one level dangerous. It is clearly dangerous for religion because it destroys absolute certainty. It is dangerous for religion, it's in particular dangerous for a historical religion such as Christianity for which the reference to defined points within human history is of absolutely fundamental importance. And we can see here why Trulch thinks that historicism ultimately is the greater challenge for Christianity, greater really than the natural senses. I personally think that he's right. He is right to think that the Christian faith can ultimately accommodate in a variety of worldviews concerning the origin of the cosmos. It's much more difficult to imagine how Christianity could accommodate itself in a worldview which would at least in principle affirm that every single historical point of reference that we could choose for our faith might also have happened entirely differently or might not have happened at all. It is true that no historian in Trotsch's time, no serious historian in Trotsch's time, or any serious historian today denies the historical existence of Jesus. But of course no historian would either say that the, the uh, no historian would either entirely exclude that possibility. No historian could do that because within the realm of history all we do is we operate with um, probabilities. We never operate with certainties. But of course the pure existence of Jesus is certainly not enough for the Christian. The Christian faith rests 